The silliest ways people died. Mad Mike Hughes took to the sky in a makeshift steam engine rocket when suddenly something went wrong. Mike had wanted to see the Earth from a height of 1,525 meters, since he believed it's actually flat, and the government's just hiding this fact from It us. is flat! In this footage, we can see the rocket adopt a curve-like trajectory, after which the landing parachutes accidentally open and detach from the vehicle during the launch stage. The rocket hit the ground and crashed, killing Mike. Yo, 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 chat, any flat earthers, any fellow flat earthers in the stream? No? Any? Bro, Earth is definitely flat, bro. 100%. 100%, bro. Have any of you guys ever seen a curve? I've not. He'd assembled the rocket himself, apparently making serious engineering mistakes. In this video, I've gathered stories about the most extreme incidents with fatal consequences. Some of them seem incredible, <laughs> but all have been taken from reliable sources. I warn you, though, as always, viewer discretion is advised. August 2012, Montana, United States. On Highway 93 near Kalispell, a car hit some strange creature that unexpectedly appeared on the road. Mate, well, that, that, that's a Bigfoot, bro. You, you, you're the first person ever to kill a Bigfoot. Almost instantly, another vehicle crashed into it. The driver of the first car was a 15-year-old girl, and the second car was driven by a 17-year-old girl. When they rushed to help the creature, it turned out to be a man wearing a ghillie suit, a fancy camouflage costume. Why? It's usually used by military hunters Why? or paintball players. The Why? suit makes a person invisible since, Why? from the outside, it looks like an ordinary pile of leaves. Why? The man's name was Randy Lee Tenley. He was 44 years old. As it turned out, Randy wanted to impersonate a mythical creature, Bigfoot. That's why he put on the costume and wandered along the highway until someone would call 911 and inform them of a Bigfoot on the loose. The authorities believed the man was most likely drunk, instead of making himself as conspicuous as possible. Yo, that is seriously dumb. You are camouflaged walking along the highway. Like, re really, bro? Really? Randy was virtually invisible. That's why a Montana State Patrol police officer, Jim Schneider, ruled the two drivers to be innocent, since it was hardly possible to notice a person wearing what? such a costume yeah, right away. Yeah, no shit! Sadly, Randy sustained injuries that were incompatible with life. Never walk on the highway if you're not wearing highly conspicuous clothing and even reflective elements during the night. The next story is yet another reminder that a desire to do something unusual can sometimes result in tragic consequences. April 2014, in St. Petersburg, Russia, a 17-year-old schoolgirl named Ksenia Ignatyeva was standing on a railway bridge and contemplating the tracks converging in the distance. The girl decided to take a selfie against this background. She raised her phone and started moving it around in an attempt to catch a nice frame that fit both her and the railway tracks. It was difficult since Xenia wasn't tall enough. So she stood up on her toes, but suddenly lost balance and started falling right over the bridge railing. Fuck. Panicking and trying to survive, the girl clutched onto some wire and was immediately hit with 1,500 volts. She fell onto the railway tracks and didn't show any signs of life. It's unknown if Xenia would have survived had she not grabbed the electric wire. Oh as the God. bridge was nine meters tall, oh my it's God. approximately the third or fourth floor of a multi-story building. So you should always focus on your safety instead of the perfect shot. And of course, never touch any wires with your hands, no matter what kind of wire. Well, I think that was just natural instinct to grab the wire when you're falling down. You know what I mean? I think we all would have tried to grab that, but... Wait, you think she probably would have survived it? Wait, really? Just never do it. Safety always comes Probably. first, regardless of whether you're trying to take the well, perfect photo chance. or if it's another trophy you're after. April 6, 2019, Kruger National Park, South Africa. Five poachers have decided to hunt some rhinos. The fact that it's illegal didn't stop the men since, to them, a rhino horn was a valuable trophy they could sell for a ton of money. In 2017 alone, as many as 504 rhinoceroses were illegally poached in the park. The administration Aww. can't control every inch of the park's enormous territory, even more so given the fact that visitors only get in on a guided safari, and poachers sneak in on foot. However, although before that fateful venture, Yo, the poaching, intruder's bro. team used to be successful in everything. On that day, they heard someone's heavy steps behind their backs. 
It was an elephant. The giant animal attacked the poachers and knocked them off their feet. The elephant wouldn't back down. It assaulted one group member and kept stomping the man with its feet until he died. Fuck yeah. All of his colleagues were shot. Wait, 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 wait. Is it is it bad cheering for someone to die? Wait. Wait, is that bad I'm cheering? No, you guys are cheering too. You guys, no, no, no. Listen, if it's bad, we're all bad together. Member and kept stomping the man with its feet until he died. Don't be all of his food. colleagues were shocked. Those less injured pulled their dead friend's body off to the road, called the police to report hey, a tragic CJ, incident, the and then escaped to avoid being caught for illegal activity. Oh, come on. However, the man's remains were never found, and the only thing that remained of him were the skull and a piece of his pants. Damn. When his poacher friends ran away, the smell of the flesh and blood attracted lions. The animals tore the corpse apart. Fate played an evil joke on the poacher. Oh, wow. While trying to hunt down an animal, he became a victim himself. So you should always follow wildlife park rules and never wander off alone if you don't have a guide or know where a safe- Yo, elephants don't play around, bro. Elephants don't play around. I've heard some crazy stories of elephants, man. I ain't surprised the elephant killed the poacher. Shelter is. It's better to abide by the law and safety rules. Or an even more horrific story can happen to you. A story like the following one. August 1999, Newport Harbor, California. 17-year-old Kim Millett was peeping into a telescope in the driveway of her house, trying to spot the Perseid meteor shower. This cosmic phenomenon can only be seen once a year, in August. However, streetlights were obstructing Kim's view, and the cosmic show was just gonna start. Then, her big brother Scott came to help her. The guy thought nothing bad would happen if he turned off one streetlight near their house, so that his little sis would see the sky. So, Scott took his tools, opened the streetlight's body, and started messing with its inner electrical workings. He most likely pulled out the inspection plate and then started cutting away at one of the exposed wires. Suddenly, Kim saw a bright flash of light, but it was no meteor shower. Her brother got electrocuted and fell onto the ground. Scott was lying by the lamppost unconscious, and when his little sister ran up to him, he already wasn't breathing. Paramedics didn't manage to resuscitate Scott, Eventually, Millet didn't know the electrical circuits of the neighboring streets were also connected to the power current. This means that the energy in the wires was enough for 80 streetlights. That's a deadly 4,000 volts. Just imagine how- Bro, I respect wanting to help your sister, but like, really turning off the streetlight yourself? Like, bro. Cool, like, bro powerful and painful this impact was for Scott, if it even left a pliers shaped scar on his hand. Never tinker with any electrical systems if you aren't properly authorized. Hey, the next story is also about the danger of trying to solve a problem alone without the help of specially trained people. September 1998, California. Hector Mendoza was screaming with joy, riding the sharp turns of a roller coaster. He was at Great America Amusement Park on a coaster named Top Gun. However, this ride was different from how we normally envision roller coasters. Its cars have no floor. Passengers get into large, separate seats and are held in place with safety belts, just like in a regular car. This enables visitors to swing their legs during movement. Never get on that. The ride Never. happens at 80 kilometers per hour Never get on and lasts for 2 minutes and 26 seconds. After Mendoza got off the roller coaster, he noticed that while he was there, the wind had blown off his cap and it was now lying somewhere on the tracks. He started explaining to the operators no that way. he needed to go back and get it. The employees didn't understand Hector, as he only spoke Spanish. The operators tried to explain to the man that the only designated area where the visitors could approach the ride was at the entrance. Irritated, Mendoza brushed them off and walked away. But the story didn't end there. He's gonna go and get it himself. He's gonna go and get it. Oh no, he's gonna go and get it. You know what? Normally when we hear this story, we don't hear that they gotta go, like they go and ask. That guy had a problem. They didn't understand him. So he did ask for them to, you know, get it himself. Oh no, this is gonna be bad. Later, Hector stealthily entered a door with a sign that read employees only and made his way toward the roller coaster tracks. The hat's not this door it. is typically only entered by specialists who check the it. ride when it's turned off and there are no visitors. Crouching, Hector avoided the tracks and made for his cap. 
Meanwhile, the ride operators had already secured the next group of park guests on the coaster. Uh -oh. One of them was Jessica Medina. Uh -oh. The ride began. Suddenly, the woman started screaming, but it wasn't adrenaline she was screaming go. from. It was pain. She'd been swinging her legs so violently that she got a right leg bone fracture. The operators rushed to see what came in the way of the roller coaster's cars. It was cars, his hat. It was his hat. shocked to find it. Was his hat. When the man was standing right near the tracks, Jessica inadvertently hit him on the head at a great speed. He died on the spot. Never Jesus. enter restricted areas in amusement parks and always follow the operator's instructions who are responsible for your safety. Sometimes the desire to retrieve something we've lost can cause devastating results, just like in the next creepy story. August 2010, Bakersfield, California. An aquarium fish caretaker entered the Moody family home. Right away, the girl felt a Bro, strange- that seems to happen more than you think, man. Like, why do people actually go, to, like, why would you go there? Like, you're literally going on the roller coasters, bro. Like, why? Pungent odor. She started looking for its source and got to the fireplace. When she took a peek inside, the girl nearly fainted. A woman was stuck in the chimney. The lady what? turned out to be Jacqueline Kodorak. William Moody was having a secret affair with Jacqueline. The relationship was far from simple, too. You're having an affair, mate? And she's fucking trying to leave the house through the chimney? Through the chimney! Although the lovers were hiding their passionate love, some locals still knew about them and told the investigation later that the two were constantly splitting and getting back together. On the day of the incident, the pair had likely fought again, and William didn't want to talk to Jacqueline. Oh. Some witnesses report having seen the woman at a bar drinking alone and being down in the dumps, after which she got up and walked somewhere hastily. As it turned out, Jacqueline wanted to discuss everything with William, so she went to his house, knowing he was there alone. Okay. However, her lover wouldn't let the woman in. Then Jacqueline found a shovel somewhere and used it to dig her way under the fence. The hey, yo, yo. Yo, just get the sign, bro. Like, you, this is too much. This is too much. Like, get the hint. Like, yeah. <laughs> bro, what, is she gonna, like, purposely get stuck and then say to the guy, Oh, no, I'm stuck. <laughs> Help me, I'm stuck. Well, somewhere. Like, bro, used it get to the hint, go. Under the, fence. the door of the house was still locked. However, the woman persevered and climbed a ladder to the roof. Oh, my Took God. off the chimney cap. And started oh. making her way down legs first Bro, how desperate are you how desperate do you need to be chat how desperate do you need to be <sighs> meanwhile william had already escaped to avoid confrontation with his mistress regarding jacqueline she got stuck 60 centimeters from the fireplace's main opening <laughs> the poor woman could neither inhale nor exhale. Oh my it's unclear God. if she'd been calling for her beloved to help her and oh how quickly she God. died of asphyxia since Jacqueline's body wasn't found by the pet fish caretaker until three days after she'd crawled into the chimney. Don't attempt breaking into other people's houses as it can have deadly consequences. There are even more horrific stories of inattention turning out to be fatal. July 13, That's 1997, crazy, man. Virginia, 22-year-old Eric Barcia was working at a fast food place and was an extreme enthusiast. The guy wanted to do bungee jumping. For some nope. reason, though, Eric decided to organize everything alone. Nope. It's unknown whether no such activity was available in his area. Nope. Or the man just wanted to prove he can construct something by himself. It's not worth it. I only know that Eric tied together some bungee cords, which turned out a bit shorter than 21 meters. That was the height of the railroad trestle in Lake Echo Tink Park. Eric knew his fall would have to stop at a short distance from the ground, after which the rope would bounce. He tied one end of the bungee cord around his legs, attached the other to the bridge railing, and jumped. Yet the cords didn't stop him above the ground. If Eric hadn't been a novice, he would have known how to correctly calculate it. The gap he'd left was too small, and when the ropes stretched, Eric hit the cobblestone pavement. The guy died on the spot. Never attempt to recreate extreme activities by yourself. Leave that to professionals who, unlike you, That's are aware crazy. of all the nuances and abide by the universal safety standards. Although professionals aren't immune to make that fatal crazy, mistakes bro. either. July 9th, 1993, Toronto, Ontario. 
Gary Hoy, a Canadian lawyer, was leading a tour around the Toronto Dominion Centre skyscraper for a group of students who were also planning to become lawyers. Gary specialized in corporate law and construction standards compliance. The lawyer had a stick. He liked demonstrating the sturdiness of the windows in the building of his law firm, Holden Day Wilson. Gary would also do a run-up and slam against the window to show it was secure and wouldn't break. He'd done this stunt many times before and always remained unscathed. This time, he ran to the window again in front Did I just hear that right? Did, did I just hear that right? He ran at the windows very high up in a building to prove it's safe. Have you ever heard of like throwing a ball? Throwing like a test on me? Hey, bro. You're throwing yourself at a window. Yo, I don't care how safe someone tells me it is or how many times you've done it before. I ain't do Like, what? In front of a suitable audience. The glass withstood him, but the frame did not. It flew out of the wall, taking the glass and Gary along. All of this was happening on the 24th floor. The lawyer Try didn't survive. Up. This came as a great shock for the students and Gary's fellow employees. The incident led to the demise of Holden Day Wilson Law Firm in 1996. Hoy's experience was featured in numerous TV shows, including Mythbusters and 1,000 Ways to Die. Now, are you sure he did that? Or is that like someone just making it up and he like got thrown out of there, like murder? Because like, I can't, like, I can't, um, I was going to say I can't think of anybody that would do that, but I actually think I can think of people that could, do, that would do that. Bro, like, why? Why, bro? Why? Why? That is that is just stupid. It's better not to tempt fate, even if you've done something that dangerous is just stupid, hundreds bro. of times already and have been lucky so far. But the previous story wasn't the most horrific outcome of spontaneous decisions. It's May 2018. The district of Odisha, India. An elite taxi driver, Prabhu Batar, was taking his passengers home from a wedding. He made a stop in the Nabarangpur district and went behind a hill near the road to urinate. There, Prabhu saw a wounded sloth bear. The driver oh, decided wait, to take a- I've never seen a sloth bear before. Wait, what? Urinate. There, Prabhu- What is that? It's a curly, curly hair bear. Prabhu saw a wounded sloth bear. The driver decided to take a selfie with the animal. His passengers tried to talk him out of it, but Prabhu didn't listen. Suddenly, the sick animal regained consciousness and attacked the man. The footage shows that the passengers ran to help Prabhu, but were afraid to approach the scene, realizing um. that the bear could hurt them too. They threw sticks and stones at the animal, but their efforts were in vain. Someone that did- Sticks and stones didn't break it? Oh, I shouldn't make jokes right now. So, someone might have died. They threw sticks and stones at the animal, but their efforts were in vain. Someone that didn't fear the bear was an average stray dog. It ran up to oh, the predator, shit. growled at it, and even bit the wild animal. This didn't help, though, as the bear was much larger. Oh, but no. her died on the spot, and the bear was taken to the vet to get its wounds treated. This may seem weird to you. The question might arise in your mind, why wasn't the bear put down? Yeah. However, the bear didn't mess with the man first. The animal was just protecting itself. You know what? I actually like that. I actually like that. Because we've seen stories where like stupid people will go up to like wild animals in the wild and then like the wild animal would attack them and then they get put down. I think that's absolute bullshit, bro. I think that is dumb. It's a wild animal. What do you think is going to happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, it's going to attack. It's wild, bro. It's wild. Do you know what I mean? It's like if we had a Jurassic Park, like a real life one, and you go running out into the dinosaur pit. Of course, it's going to kill you. you know what I'm saying? So, I, I respect that. I respect that. Like, I'm sad for them that it died, but, you know, don't go playing around with wild animals, man. That's why you should never come close to wild animals, as they see this as a threat and will attack you, even if you weren't going to. I'll leave links to all these incredible stories below, crazy. so you don't think I made them up. Crazy, crazy, crazy stories, bro.